What's up everybody? My name is Brian. You are watching Angling Anarchy and what we are going to talk about on today's video is ghost follow muskies. So I guess first off I should probably explain myself and what a ghost follow is at least uh, amongst my friends and I. A uh, ghost follow is when you're casting and you go to make that next cast and you look down at the locator and boom all of a sudden there's a a mark right below the boat. It's a fish that you didn't see come in when you were watching your bait on the figure eight. It may have come in late, maybe came in low enough that you didn't see it, but it is a fish that we in my boat have been able to get to hit every now and again and I think it's probably something that most people don't think about when they're out fishing. The term ghost follow we didn't coin that. Uh, it came from a musky hunter magazine. Uh, it's quite a few years old. I, I don't remember what year, what month, any of that. Uh, and I don't even remember the gentleman's name that wrote the article. But what I do remember is he was doing a study where he was uh, filming with an underwater camera and sort of trying to watch what muskies were doing when they came in on a figure eight. And one day he was watching the video and there was a fish that came in that he they hadn't seen in the boat you know it was it was this fish that came in low and slow they, they didn't know it was there but the video captured it so uh, that's that's where we got the term uh, ghost follow and, and we've been using it in my boat ever since now the first time we were able to actually capitalize on a ghost follow was uh, uh, my friends uh, Nate Nate and Nate we were fishing up in northern Wisconsin and I noticed a fish on the locator so I grabbed a chaos tackle Pegasus and started jigging it and I watched the fish come up on the locator and it was interested in it obviously but I could not get it to hit and Nate was standing next to me and I've got footage of this and I'll show it when I'm done talking about it and he had a mid medusa on so just sort of being interested in what I was doing he was sort of jigging off to the side and watching what I was doing and all of a sudden rod doubles over um, and unfortunately back in those days when I was filming the audio wasn't very good so it's a little bit, there's, there's some wind blowing and you can't hear what's going on, but this is the first fish we were able to convert on a ghost follow. <laughs> now the funny thing about that day is that was not the first fish that we got to hit uh, while we were watching the locator. I think it was about 15 minutes later we, were, we went around a point and this one I guess technically isn't really a ghost follow but it just goes to show the, the power of, of having something to be able to jig in front of a fish that you do see on the locator because we saw this fish, once again Nate dropped on it and boom, it hit and it was a nice 42 inch northern Wisconsin muskie.
oddly enough, that was not the last fish that day. We actually got three fish, all jigging medusas. Two of them were on ghost follows. Uh, the third one, I think we were all kind of in, in disbelief that this was actually working. But, um, well, here, watch that one. After that day, we sort of made it um, a little bit more common practice to have a rod at the ready. You know, somebody should always have a rod at the ready. Uh, whether it's up in the front of the boat, back of the boat, have something where you've got a jigging bait on it. I don't care if it's, you know, we really like to use the mid medusa, but I don't care what it is. Uh, I guess the point of this video is you should really think about having a bait at the ready, you know, kind of hanging over the side. You can grab it and not have to tussle with it because it's super frustrating when you see a fish on the locator and this happens to you. Are you, are you I'm kidding me? So having a rod with a bait kind of maybe hanging over the side or something like that, uh, that you can grab real quick and you don't have to tussle with it like I did in that last clip uh, and, and be able to get it down on that fish. It's not always going to get them to hit. Uh, I'll admit I've tried this a lot of times on Eagle Lake and I still haven't been successful, but I've had a lot of fish not only stay on the bait for minutes at a time, so you know they're interested in it. It's only a matter of time before we're able to get one to hit, but I did uh, have one follow the bait all the way up to the surface and show interest in it. Throw the Medusa for a little bit here. Jay, look at that. I just had one come up on a Medusa. Oh, it's right there. It's right there. It was a ghost fall and I dropped it down and I saw that. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at that ghost fall and that right there. She came up on it. Yeah, I briefly, briefly saw the bro. I couldn't make it outside. She... Oh, she's right there. She's right there. She's right there. I guess moral of the story is keep an eye on your electronics. I know a lot of guys are using side imaging to see fish out to the sides. I mean, that's a fantastic way to do it, but, uh, and I do have side imaging, but I, I don't, I probably don't use it to its fullest potential. Um, but that traditional sonar can still tell you so much. Uh, so, you know, pay attention to it uh, as you're casting. And if you see that nice big arc show up underneath the boat, um, you know, a lot of the lakes we're in, chances are it's musky. You know, if, if, if I'm on the Madison chain, it could be a carp, it could be something else. But there's a lot of lakes in northern Wisconsin and Canada, especially, where 
a lot of times if that fish shows up underneath the boat, there's only one thing it is, and it's a, a muskie that has followed a bait in to the boat. Um, so, yeah, try it out, man. Uh, it's a really cool technique. It's so awesome when it works. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So uh, I hope this was helpful and uh, kind of gave me an excuse to use some old footage that I, uh, the audio wasn't the best, but uh, we were able to, to use it here and, and show you guys uh, kind of what uh, what to look for. Hopefully uh, you can get a, a fish to convert, a fish or two to convert uh, over this next year. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.